welcome please to the next speaker and go about topics okay thank you so good morning everyone so now everybody already saw about like the the workflow you know how a developer can start and then able to create a container create a container image then deploy it in different platforms <laughs> in this particular talk what we are going to talk about is like uh, how many of you used openshift oh nice so there are a lot of people who used openshift and how many people how many of you heard about something called openshift local want okay how many of you heard about code ready containers yes so code ready containers it was the old name we have something called openshift local now so as name suggest you can create a cluster locally on your system so and it's a platform independent right so you can create the cluster on um, mac windows or or linux right and then you can play around with the openshift and once you are ready with your applications you see like okay everything is working fine for me i can now deploy it on on kind of production kind of cluster you can just change the context of um openshift and then you can deploy your application right so as per agenda we are just going to so i, I think everybody knows what openshift is so yeah in the heart we are still the kubernetes so everything is the kubernetes and then we have top of some add-ons which makes the developers life easy admins life easy right and so this is very very kind of a top view overview about the kubernetes like there is some there is a there is components of the kubernetes which makes the kubernetes what is it we have api we have cli we have some applications then we have ingress to create the routes and everything right but if you see about the open shift we have everything what the kubernetes have and then we have the add ons like as i said to make uh, the developers life easy like so we have dev, dev console um we have templates we have build config as to i and everything on on top of it so now what's the open shift local this is the definitions what we really provides we have in the readme uh, but the the basic line is that you should run a, uh, you should able to run the uh, the open shift uh, like it is running in somewhere in the in the cloud or somewhere remotely directly on your op directly on your system and able to play around with it so uh, this is your laptop um, it's running a diff whatever the host operating system it is running we try to consume the native hypervisor and then uh, the the crc is the cli to interact with that virtualization um, and then create the cluster start the cluster and then you can use the cluster so on the top we have like three simple commands uh we say okay crc setup and then okay start and then start using it so it's as simple as possible on much more over like there are different components in 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 the openshift locals we have something called vm driver we create everything in a bundle which have openshift client binary we have uh, vm images and if you go on the top again you will see what the each command actually doing so <clears throat> set up actually set up the kind of set the prerequisites for the host and then you start it start the vm trying to connect everything together and using the oc env you can just start using the oc client binary uh, with with that particular cluster uh, installation it's very simple so you go this particular page you can just say okay which operating system i want to download it uh, download the openshift local copy the pull secret run it and that's it you are able to run it um, and the the link is already in the slide which will share okay so now everything around the theory is completed we can start with the demo uh, so demo we have very basic application uh, so we have a database which is postgres database then there is a to do application which is trying to connect to this database and then we try to expose that particular to do list um, locally and try to see if everything is working um, as as a 
our expected way. So as I said, uh, so I have the CRC is running. So the, the first thing I usually do is getting the status of the machine. Uh, and it will actually provide me the status of the VM. It will also provide me the status of the OpenShift, which is uh, there, uh, which version of the OpenShift it is running, uh, what is the use RAM and CPU is used by the, um, the VM, and how much cache it used for storing all those kind of things, right? So I'm using the 4.11.7. Uh, everything is running, uh, so that's great. Uh, the next command is um, OCENV, what it do is that uh, it's if you don't uh, have the OC, which is open client binary, installed in your local system, what you can do is that you can use this command. It will put that particular path here, uh, on your uh, system variable path, and then you have the OC directly uh, working without you know downloading through the internet. So I have that also. So now check uh, which server I am connected to. So if you see here, I am connected locally. If you can see, there is already a um, domain name which is there for interacting with the CRC VM. There's, this is the API which is exposed to use with, uh, and OC is connected to that particular API. Check the different context. So I, I'm right now using this particular context, but I have some CRC developer con context and admin context which I can use, or I can create a new user because everything is running locally in my system. So about the application now, about uh, the, the, the app which we want to deploy on this particular system or this particular cluster. So uh, let's increase the font. Uh, is it visible? Should I increase? Okay. So uh, I put this particular app already on the GitHub. Uh, we'll put it in the slides, like how to get it. But the idea of this particular app is it is a Go application. So the the interesting thing, like what we actually have here, like it's a Go application which try to run uh, this to-do list. Uh, and it's supposed to connect in these environment variables which we have the database. Uh, if it is getting from the environment variable, get from the environmental var variable, otherwise use the local host, same with the port, user, password, and database name, right? And then, um, so what usually do, uh, what usually developer do uh, once they code it, uh, they have this kind of repository, and then uh, the first thing they do, okay, I have everything there. Now the first thing to put it in any um, any cloud or uh, any Kubernetes uh, resource, I have to first create the image, right? So with CRC, we also expose the Podman socket. So if you don't have the Podman installed on your system, so what you can do is CRC Podman ENV. Uh, what it do is that it will also expose the Podman socket, add it to your local system, add, uh, make sure that uh, the Podman uh, client binary is associated with your path, and you can run the Podman on top of it. So in the last session, like you saw, uh, you can interact with the Podman, you can create the image and everything. So I have a very basic container file, uh, which is like multi-stage build. So what I'm doing is like, okay, uh, I, I'm going to uh, get this uh, Go tool set um, base image because our application is in Golang, and then I'll build it first, and then I'll try to use a very minimal Go uh, UBI image from Relate, and uh, yes, and then I'll, so in my first build, whatever the artifact I created, which is a binary, which is called Todo, I'll put that to uh, the, uh, the the second stage of the build, right? And then I'll just add the entry point of that particular to-do binary, right? So, okay, I created my container files and everything. Now, the, 
the way you supposed to create the build is code main build right uh, no cache i don't want to have any cache in between of those images i want to tag my image to quay.io my namespace and then to do list and this is the container file right now it is say can cannot connect to the podman because the so what i have to do is let's see if i have the podman socket enabled so try to evaluate Second, I have to do it. Let's see if I can get the image. Yes, now it is connected. Let's build it. So now it start building. I have this base image and everything already in cached uh, because everything is running locally. It is very fast. I can iterate it very fast. Create the container image, and then right, everything is created. Uh, what after? after that what we usually do after creating the container image we we push it to the respective container registry right so here i use the quay.io right this is the registry which i have so i use simple right so once i push that it goes to this particular my namespace with the to do with the latest tag I already have that, so I'm not going to use that step. So now everything is in place. So now I have the image, and I already pushed it to the the registry. The next step, what we usually do after that, we create the container. Uh, sorry, we create the Kubernetes resources, which is like we create the ports, we create the deployment config, we create the service, and all those kind of things, right? And then try to you know put those resources use oc create or kubectl create and then specify those file names whatever we created so here i have all those resources as part of this open directory so what i did is that everything uh, from from the starting from the namespace till the service everything is in this file so if we just take a quick look of this particular file what we see is here okay uh this is the first thing the first resource we are creating okay as soon as i deploy it i want to deploy it in a namespace called damnation and then once i deploy it i have a secret which actually contains all the details about my db name db passwords and db users right and once i deploy the secret then i have a deployment so this deployment so i supposed to have two deployments one is for the database and one for my application so that it can able to connect right so here i have the first deployment uh, which is for the postgres and then i have the second deployment after that so first i will create a deployment create a service and then create the second okay no anyway it's a lot of so we have like okay this many lines but the thing is that in in the next session you will also learn like you don't need to create those resources right now what we are going to a typical developer journey where the initially the user has to do all those kind of things right writing the yaml and trying it out trying to see if that will going to work the change the yaml and it's very difficult to you know find these kind of small issues so in the next session we are going to use something called audio and in that you will understand like okay i don't need to create those yamls also i can directly use that image and i can directly create with two three commands i can create my my application but for this session uh, i wanted to go like from very very basic of the kubernetes resources how to deploy it and all those kind of things so now we have the deploy uh, deployment scripts or resources and everything is in this yaml so what we have to do we just say okay let's see right we don't care about the warnings let have it there but you see there are a lot of things are already existed it's say already existed because everything was there before but let's let's see which project we are in we are already in okay we are in the default project so
so we delete the project called dev nation right and let's try it again from from the scratch uh, it says it's already okay the dev nation is already it didn't clear it yet ah not found okay yes so now it took some time to the the cube to you know remove all those kind of things which we created before but now everything is created from beginning so now if you see i supposed to go in this namespace so i'll in in open shift i can see okay or see project so i'm in this project now now i want to see all the resources which is part of there everything is already running right and till now everything is the the way we did uh, it's not only the open shift specific but as i said in the beginning we in the heart we are still the kubernetes so you can use the same shape of any kubernetes uh, cluster either on the locally or on a remote cluster you can use all the things it will show something like that only right but now the thing which we will do is like we want so right now everything is running but how do i see my application right how do i access my application and in the open shift we have something called route for to do that so this is what we are going to create so we are going to expose the service uh, and the service which we have is called to do psql example and as soon as i expose that particular service it's create automatically route so a route is created so now i have a route resource and if i go i will hit the hit this endpoint uh, my application is there right so now i have a application and let's add something to that welcome Okay. So this is a very basic application. So we are adding the things to the DB, and the way we use the DB, so it, the, uh, we use something called um, the empty directory as a mounted on the DB. So as soon as the the pod presses, everything is removed. So it's only for the demo purpose but you usually what you used to do is that you add a pv and then attach to that pv to the db so that your things are there even the the ports are restarted so uh, everything is working i can delete when the things are done i can edit the list or whatsoever now uh so now so okay so right now what we did is that we usually created a route and we access the route to to access our application right but in 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 case of the kubernetes right now where the there is no resource called route you can't use it so there are different application to have uh, your ingress using the ingress you can also create the route and then you can use that right and if if you don't want to create a route so what you can do in the open uh, on on the kubernetes is you can actually expose a particular port and that port which you expose is directly exposed from the container and that container port also you can access as we access for the uh, the route so let's try to do that also so i say the ports which we have we have two different ports one is the postgres another one is this to do app and then let's try to export it port export and what we want to do is that we want to use this one and we say okay i want to export this okay
Posi kamu. One second. Everything doesn't work on the first time in the demo. So. Ah, it's not port export. It's called port forward. So it's good to have some kind of history. Let's see. Right. So now what we did is that uh, from the um, port directly this particular. So in our port, this particular port is what it is actually ac our application is exposed. And now it is exposed directly to our local system. So if I hit this particular thing here, I supposed to see the same, right? It's still there. Everything is working. And let's add something like hello. And see, right now I'm exported ports, but I can also access it from the the route which I created, which is like to do, right? And if you see here. If I add the data here, it should have the same data because it's using the same DB in the background. It's the same thing. Nothing changed here, right? So now everything is done. I have deployed the things in the OpenShift locally, and I'm very happy about this particular application. OK, everything is working in my application. I can do whatever this particular application tried to do. And now I want to, you know, push that particular application to some remote cluster or some production cluster. So to do that, uh, like in the previous session, we use something called Dev Sandbox. So you can create a cluster on the Dev Sandbox. And what you only have to do is you just try to do this OC create and this particular deploy.yml. So um, let's see if I have a config set. So I also have a Dave sandbox cluster, which is I already logged in just before the demo. So I try to use that context so that now my OpenShift cluster is supposed to point to this particular. Okay, so now I switch to that particular cluster. So if I see or oh, see who am I? So now it's my cluster is the Dev Sandbox cluster, right? The only thing is that the Dev Sandbox uh, we have only one single namespace, so I can't create all the I can't create a different namespace there. So I have to change a little bit of in my script. Uh, which is the deploy one. What I'll do is, okay, I know that my namespace on the Dev Sandbox is, so if I'll do now, what I did is only I changed the context, I create, I actually logged into a different cluster and now everything again, I able to deploy everything there, right? It, because I already deployed it, it says like, okay, this configuration is not changed, this configuration is not changed, but the thing is that on this cluster also, now I have the same application which is running and I can use that application, right? So back to our slides. Yes, so this is the demo which I had and then there are free resources which you can try it out after that and then all the demo links and everything, we'll put it in the presentation and we'll share it with you guys. So yeah, thank you. Hey Praveen, uh, question. I mean, OpenShift local and uh, MiniShift. Is there anything? I mean, are they related? So the, when when we created the MiniShift, it was mostly the OpenShift 3.x, and the way oh, OpenShift now 4.x actually starts or works or configured is completely different. The way it used to be for the 3.x, so we had to shift to from. We can't use the same kind of uh, logics and everything which you used in the uh, MiniShift. For OpenShift 4, so now for OpenShift 4, we have this OpenShift local rebranded name, and all the things are changed. 